You want to see what a mess is my desk? Here, take a look. Take a look, come on. Hi everyone, here's the Bookamist once again, and I know I have never talked about games in this channel, but I have talked about Lovecraft quite a lot. In fact, I consider myself an authority in the field for no reason whatsoever. Lovecraftian horror is a thing nowadays. Lovecraft has inspired a whole subgenre, and the main features of it can be found in a number of books, in a number of short stories, both amatorial and from notorious authors, Stephen King, Arguably the world's greatest horror author is heavily inspired by Lovecraft and also of course his horror as translated into other media like movie or games. But Lovecraftian horror proper is something that belongs quintessentially in my opinion to literature, it is very difficult to translate it to other media. The core of Lovecraftian horror in a nutshell is that there are forces outside the reach of mankind that we can neither understand nor of course possibly defeat and that is rather hard to translate for instance in movies because of course most horror movies require you to show a monster and mon Lovecraftian monsters usually are supposed to send you, I mean to drive you insane just by looking at them. Games, games are even worse because of course there is a cultural, an understandable cultural demand that games are supposed to be won at one point and the main point of Lovecraftian horror is that you can never win. At the same time, especially in recent years, many games have emerged that manage to convey the core, the quintessential feelings and vibe of Lovecraftian horror in a quite uh, effective way, let's say. And this is my top 10 games, top 5 games, that all Lovecraft fans should play. Not all of these are video games, stick with me for a minute. Uh, some of you will mention old games like Silent Hill, that's completely understandable, but I try to stick to recent titles that you can possibly, I mean, reasonably find and play quite easily. Number 5 is Slender, and everybody knows Slender, it's more than a game, it's an internet sensation, it was at least a couple of years ago, but not lots of people have stopped and reflected on how Lovecraftian that game is. It is actually about a creature that just by looking at it, you lose how Lovecraftian that whole concept is, and the way the game makes you feel scared, the way it built all that tension and terror, reminded me a lot of Lovecraft. Also, the fact that you can, well, not really win the game, because even if you collect the 8 pages, it's not like you actually win something, that's extremely Lovecraftian. So yeah, as a game itself is some of something of a curiosity, maybe it's not the best game ever, but Lovecraft fans should try it if they still haven't. Dark Corners of the Earth, it's the exact opposite, it's a game that through and through inspired by Lovecraft and by the Cthulhu Mythos, it's an awesome game that appeals to many of the most famous stories like the Shadow of Erin's move, of course the Call of Cthulhu, and I mean, it manages to convey that feeling of terror and of helplessness from the very beginning, also because of a quite clever choice as far as narration goes. If you're looking for a Lovecraftian video game that actually talks about Lovecraft stories, that's possibly the best out there, I think. Arkham Horror is a board game and I have recently become addicted to board gaming and it's probably the board game I like the most and the one I hate the most. Arkham Horror is about a team of investigators hunting monsters and defeating this evil cult in the middle of the city of Arkham before this cult actually manages to summon the Ancient One. People will say that this is not actually Lovecraftian at all because actually in this game you might at one point defeat Cthulhu himself using shotguns and swords. And that is completely, of course, against the whole idea that you can't possibly win. At the same time, throughout the game, there's this continuous sensation, this continuous feeling, which is a very well-based feeling, that everything, every terrible thing out there might happen to you at any moment. And that is, I think, especially Lovecraftian. If you enjoy the most adventures among Lovecraft stories, like the case of Charles Dexter Ward, The Shadow of Rismut, you should definitely give this one a try. Also, if you're not into board gaming, but you're into role-playing game, because this works very well as one of those. As a game itself, as far as the mechanics are concerned, I think the game is kind of flowed, mainly because lots of stuff in it are randomized, which means that in some games you might be super lucky and have everything easy, in other games you might lose despite all your best efforts. But that too, the idea that there is this external force that controls the game and that you can't possibly foresee, is in a way kinda Lovecraftian.
Number two, Amnesia The Dark Descent. That is a perfect Lovecraftian game. There, as in Slender, looking at your enemies makes you go insane, and the more you progress through the game, the more, well, you realize how sinister, how terrifying this world is, and you realize that the monsters lurking in the dark might also be lurking inside yourself, and that is another topos of Lovecraft literature, Lovecraftian literature. Amnesia conveys the vibe and the themes of Lovecraftian horror together with an awesome, excellent video game. The sequel, A Machine for Pigs, is also kinda awesome, even though there's some steampunkish stuff thrown in in the mixture, but that one feels more like a movie you are driven through than a video game, so, well, it's a different experience. And finally, number one, Hunkor Head. And I think most of you want to know Hunkor Head. I'm ready to bet about it, even if you knew the other four, but I think it's by far the most awesome Lovecraftian game out there. Also, because as I said at the beginning of the video, Lovecraftian horror belongs quintessentially to literature. It's something you read in books, it's something that you have to form in your own mind, it's something that stays with you long after you've finished reading and that kind of troubles your dreams for a while, at least at first. And it might be that Anchorage is so effective at that, because it's not a game in the common sense. It is interactive fiction. It works on a website, you have to read through a few passages written in the second person, and then you leave your own adventure. You go around wandering this town, this insmooth looking town of Angkor Head, you investigate the town and you find out horrible stuff after horrible stuff. I can't stress enough how awesome that game is, just try it. It's a game, a story, call it what you will, but it's great. It's very effective in conveying, well, the Lovecraftian themes, it's filled with references to Lovecraft. Some of the images in there are nightmarish and gruesome, but the game is clever enough because at first you will think you are in control, you, you will think you have gotten the gist of what's going on and that sh everything is at your hand and that you are overpowerful because of all the items you are carrying around in the pockets of your trench coat. But that's exactly when the Lovecraftian element will kick in and kick your ass. So yeah, this whole video was basically my way of letting you know that you should definitely read slash play Anchor Head, so grab a notebook, start taking some notes, explore the whole city, play that game. Thank you so much for watching guys, let me know what your favorite Lovecraftian games are, let me know if you think these games convey the themes and the atmosphere of Lovecraft well enough, let me know what you think, I will see you in the next one, bye guys.